And uh, now I'm back. It took me two and a half years to do this, but uh, I'm here to pick up right where I left off. Just like I tell you, I'm ready to push hard and, and, and not stop you know, until I accomplish the things that I was set to accomplish. Two positives that I think I saw in the break. One is that you, you're standing up for yourself and, and fighters, and a lot of times fighters get taken advantage of contractually, and you, you decided, you know what, I'll sit out until I fight this. So that's one. Number two, it always helps to, to maybe lay off a little bit on the mileage. You kind of prolong your career. So talk to me about those two points. Just, just as you explained right now, it, it did happen like that. Um, you know, I stuck to my guns. I, I fought for what I believe was right. It's not easy. You know, a lot of fighters don't have the opportunity or the, the uh, means to be able to hold a lawsuit and, and not make any money from the fights. You got no other means of making income. You got to provide for family. It's very hard. I was lucky enough, blessed enough to, to be able to allow that and do it. And uh, like you said, the layoff also helped my body maybe regenerate. So, you know, just mentally, emotionally, physically. That break actually helped me. Um, um, more motivated me now than I was before. Um, here with, with a different uh, goal and different plan, different you know, approach to the sport. Um, had I been fighting this last two, two and a half years, I honestly think right now I probably would be thinking about retiring. My brother can tell you the same thing. He was starting to get a little boring, a little old, redundant, and that time off allowed me to live a little, enjoy the break, and come back even stronger. Two more questions, and I'll let everybody else know. Um, describe what happened in the last fight. Uh, and, and powerful, right? TKO. Describe what happened in the last fight and why you feel strong. Well, we, we came to the to the last fight. Uh, we had asked uh, a 140-pound limit. Uh, I was fighting Elio Rojas, who was also a former featherweight champion, just like myself. Um, I know he's a tricky fighter. He can move. He can box. He's a very good fighter. But uh, once he started landing the punches, the power difference was, was uh, just too great for him. Uh, I landed some good shots in the third, fourth round, and finally put him out. Um, but even that fight, you know, I think I think uh, I took a little extra time because my brother, and my dad, kept insisting that I be extra patient, extra careful. You know, they were a little concerned, like everybody else was, about the layoff, maybe the ring rust issue, all that. But I knew that wasn't going to be a problem. As soon as I started, you know, taking control of the fight, I took over, and it was, I think, a very good performance for me. And last question, for the lighter weights, you know, what we don't see a lot of is, is knockouts. Is that one of the things you think that's, that you have going for you, that you're one of the more powerful knockout fighters in the lighter weights? Um, you know what? Be, be, because of the knockouts, I, I don't know really if it's my power or the opponents. It's a combination of both. But fans like to see knockouts. Fight, fight fans like to see knockdowns. They, they love to see, you know, a great performance like that. I go in there, I do my job. Most of the time, a lot of times, you know, I drop my opponent or I knock him out. That just happens. But um, that works well. You know, it's what the fans want to see and that's what they pay to see. And, you know, I'm happy to give it to them.